Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to The Law. This is your legal lights. It is your health law. Many work a lifetime to acquire land or houses. Call it real property. It is perhaps the most enduring investment a person makes or looks to make for himself and as an inheritance. A claim that one may lose her land to their caretaker for some reasons has been trending in recent times. Well, long before now, it was all over social media that if you are not careful, the property that you have bought, be it a land or a home or a house that you have put somebody in care of, it is likely that that person can take over that property lawfully. <clears throat> that is a claim that made the rounds. Some lawyers attempted to give some education, including one particular judge, Justice Alexander was 82, tried to give education on the situation. <clears throat> but the issue is back, trending. So is it really the law <clears throat> that a caretaker who has occupied your property for some 10 years can claim the property if you have not been paying him or her? Is that the correct position of the law on what is known as the principle of adverse possession? This matter has caught many, many people has got many, many people talking. It caught the attention of the Ghana Bar Association as well, <clears throat> and their leaders have been worried about the miseducation that can get some misguided caretakers and family relations taking care of property, especially for relations living abroad, to misbehave. So this afternoon, we are lucky that the author of this seminal work, this book, is called The Contemporary, Contemporary Trends in the Law of Immovable Property in Ghana. You may have uh, seen me introduce it on Newsfile about two years ago, but that was the first edition. This is the second edition. The author of this seminal work, over a thousand pages, one hundred, a uh, thousand and sixty pages, is here with us, courtesy the leadership of the Ghana Bar Association, to help us to understand what the law really is in this direction. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'm Samson Ladi Anyanini. Section 236, subsection 1 of the Land Act 2020, Act 1036. Despite the provisions of the Limitation Act 1972 and any other law, a person who unlawfully occupies public land does not acquire an interest in or right over that land by reason of the occupation. Section 236. Subsection 1 of the Land Act 2020, Act 1036. Despite the provisions of the Limitation Act 1972 and any other law, a person who unlawfully occupies public land does not acquire an interest in or right over that land by reason of the occupation. 
Section 236. You're welcome back. This is the law. It is your legal light. It is your health law. And that was by way of your the law 101. <clears throat> and as we always do, our guests will give us some education on section 236 of the Land Act 2020, Act 1036. Our guest this afternoon is the Director of Legal Education and director of the Ghana School of Law. You know him as Yao Opong. He is Berima Yao Kodie Opong, and he is the author of the book I just showed you a while ago, Contemporary Trends in the Law of Immovable Property in Ghana. <clears throat> Thank you so very much for making time to join us. I appreciate the privilege. I'm very happy to be here. Back to the very seat that we used to <laughs> occupy regularly. That's right. Thank you very much. We appreciate that now. We can't have you as we used to do. <laughs> and uh, thanks to the Ghana Bar Association, you have been pulled out here <laughs> for us. And this is going to be the first of um, a two-part series that we are going to have Yao Pong in the studio. Today he's going to treat this subject, but the next time uh, we'll deal with a lot of things regarding the Ghana School of Law as well. And some of you have questions about the running of the school and a few things, especially those of you who are seeking to enter the law school. He will be here to give you answers. Right, so our law the Law 101 is Section 236. Can you help our viewers with some explanation? Yes, so thank you very much, um, viewers and perhaps others listening. Um, we are grateful for your time. Now, Section 236, as has already been read, it has about 14 subsections. That's right. Now, uh, but the... Um, most important one on the point that we wish to make today is subsection one, which says that despite provisions of the Limitation Act of 1972, NRCD 54, and any other law, a person who unlawfully occupies public land does not acquire an interest in or right over that land by reason of the occupation. This is very interesting indeed, and it's welcoming. The only problem I have is that why will the state exclude state or public lands from what I call the harsh effect of the Limitation Act, especially Section 6 of that Act, where if an individual, a family, or a stool owns land, and for some reason, even if they had noticed that a person in occupation is exercising what they call adverse possession, acts that are inconsistent with the right of that owner, after 12 years, the act does not only indicate that you have no right to go to court to seek relief, to recover the land, but even your right over our interest in that land is extinguished. And I find that to be inconsistent with the general provisions in the Constitution that guarantee ownership of land. And so if the state finds it necessary to exclude state lands from obvious harsh provision in a law that was passed under a military rule, which is what the NRCD 54 Mm. is then why has the state not found the same wisdom to be applicable to lands owned by others, including stools? Mm. And I think that when we come to digest it further, we may make further points 
to buttress it. But, but you find that it does not limit it to the Limitation Act of 1972. It says the Limitation Act 1972 and any other law. Exactly. Exactly. But then... So that... Yes, sir. Mm. Is it to mean that if you... And it's entitled Unlawful Occupation or Sale of Public Land. It's, does it mean then that if you go onto a vacant public land, however long you stay on that land, you cannot come to own it? Yes. I mean, if you go further to subsection 2, it says, a person shall not acquire by prescription or adverse possession mm -hmm. an estate or interest in public land. And so once the land has not been granted to you by the appropriate agency, for example, the Lands Commission, acting as uh, an agent of the president in whom public lands are vested, then it doesn't matter whether you have been on the land for one year or 50 years. In the eyes of the law, and, and the other provisions make it even clear that it constitutes a criminal offense. And indeed, it goes on further that where the state agency concerned, especially Lands Commission or the District Assembly fails to resist you, and when you enter, they can use reasonable force to eject you. If they fail to do that, they can go to court. And if they fail, any other person who has the enjoyment of any interest in such public lands, like you and I, mm. we are entitled to enjoy by some extension, interest in public lands because the lands belong to all of us. Any of us can take both the person who is encroaching on the land and the lands commission, for example, to court mm. to ensure that you get an order for recovery of possession and ejectment of that person from the land. And that is how, for me, deep it is. So the education will be that the impression people have had that uh, call them squatters or whatever can go onto a public land. That's a land that belongs to the state. And when they stay there for long enough, nothing can be done to them. This law does not give that right. It takes it away. In my view, yes, it takes it away. And, and I think it should be extended to all other lands or interests owned by other persons, and that's my personal opinion. And of course, it makes sense because otherwise, you may have um, maybe an officer of the Lands Commission. He has seen that somebody is occupying part of the Jubilee House. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a huge land over mm -hmm. there unoccupied. And then, after 12 years, you come to ask him to leave. He says, "Well." Have you not heard about the adverse possession in the Limitation Act, for example? Mm. And because of that, not only has your right to take me to court extinguished, but your interest in the land has also extinguished. I think that it is a very important uh, provision that the lawmakers have included in this act mm. and, and even made it a criminal offense. So that's the education that you need to take note of. But how do we contrast that with, um, I think it's in section five, yes. where it provides for some usufractory yes. interest yes. for people who have stayed on the land for 50 years, that's right. where steps will be taken to, you know, let them have what it calls the usurpatory interest in it. Yes, that, How do you that, that, that's that? true. And I've mm. commented on it in the book. Right. Now, first of all, section 5.1, in defining what is usurpat mm -hmm. as an interest in land, the, what is on point here is 1B. It's acquired through settlement of a period of not less than 50 years with the permission, and that is where the emphasis is, okay. with the permission of the holder of an allodia title, and that is also to be emphasized, okay. allodia title, by a non-indigent or group of non-indigents or the descendants of the non-indigent or group of non-indigents, 
except where the settlement is on agreed terms. So what it means is that if you allow, you permit a person to settle on land in which you hold the Alodia title, the Alodia title is the most superior of all interests or, in, or title to land, mm. usually held by stools and some families as well. Individuals may also hold the title. Is it correct to say that's sort of the original owner? Yes, that's the, the most original owner. Okay. Normally acquired through fair settlement, mm. by hunters, even acquired through Conquest. purchased conquest, which okay. is now an illegality anyway. Right. You cannot they used to go now, to work to get lands. Yes, now yeah. you when you do that. So if you are if you have that kind of you have that kind of owner yeah. of the land, that's right. Then that's the emphasis you're talking yes, about. And you permit a person to occupy or take possession of that land for fifty years without express agreement. The express agreement may say that you are on this land as my tenant. Mm -hmm. You are on this land for 20 years. You are to, let's say, plant cash crops okay. or construct uh, maybe a, a temporary structure mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. And upon expiry of the term or when the property runs into ruins, then you will cease to be the owner. If you don't provide all this, then once the person occupies on what I call the Alodia land for 50 years, the, origin, the right of the original owner is completely extinguished. Okay. And that is a form of adverse possession. All right. And, but that relates to a Lodia title held in a land in Ghana. Okay. So that's a whole lot. And I suppose that you have enjoyed our, uh, the law 101 as we use that as a prelude to the discussion that we are having this afternoon under the um, heading, can someone take my landed property? Um, if you kept your relative on your land or you put a caretaker on your land, particularly you are not a resident in, in the area. Uh, you may live in Accra and you have land in Kumasi. You may live in Accra, you have a, ha a house in Kumasi, you don't live in it and you give it to somebody to stay there and take care of it or you are living abroad and you have given your land or your uh, property to someone to take care of, is there the possibility in Ghanaian law that they will come to take over that land depending on certain circumstances? That's the thorny issue we are looking at this afternoon. But before that, we decided to go into the Law 101 to talk about where the law says in section uh, 236, that if it is a public land, it doesn't matter how long you go and stay on it, you will not mature to become an owner and have an interest or title on the public land. So watch that. Um, it reminds me of a few things happening in the country now, <laughs> where people are willing certain lands <laughs> to their, their relatives, whether the law allows so. Okay, so now let's get to uh, um, issue for today. First of all, when I say that I am the owner of land, what will it mean? So that we, if we can start from that way, what will it mean when I say I'm the owner of land? What do I need to show to show that I'm actually the owner of the land or a house? Yeah, thank you very much. So um, before a person becomes an owner, I think we were discussing it earlier on. Uh, in years past, as we at the beginning of time, mm. it could have been by conquest. Uh, once you are able to conquer someone, or I mean a group of people or um, a division in an area or a community, mm. um, it is agreed that where they were settled, over which you subdue them, you conquer them and be, you vanquish them, that can become part of your land right. if you decide to claim it. Now, it can also, in years past, also acquired by hunters of, for first settlement. So quite a number of 
what has become school and family lands were acquired through fair settlement. Mm. Or sometimes a family can pull resources together and acquire land from an original owner. But that original owner would divest himself completely of all the interests that he had. And, and, and so on. Explain that. An original owner can divest himself of his rights. Yes, an original owner can, if he has the Alodia title, which is forever, mm -hmm. can also still give you everything that he has. What he cannot give you is what he doesn't have, okay. as you lawyers put it. Right. But once he is the Alodia owner, the law does not preclude a person from divesting himself of completely all the interests he had. So some students and some families who own the Alodia title actually acquired it from others through purchase, for example, or gift mm. also, okay. which are all documented um, in the law itself and also in the, in the book. Okay. So then an individual can also acquire land from even the Alodia owner. An individual can acquire, when he does so, the Alodia owner may decide that, well, I want to have some remote interest in the land. That is what you lawyers call reversion. Mm -hmm. And so I will not give you all the title that I have called Alodia title. Remember, it is settled that it is the Alodia alone which is called title. Mm. The rest are interests. Okay. That has been documented as well. Right. So he can decide to give you what we call freehold. The freehold has been described variously to be potentially perpetual. In plain terms, it can be forever. And when you see how I was struggling, mm -hmm. because there are exceptions, but That's it right. can be forever. In it, we have customary law of freehold, and we have common law of freehold, and all that you can have. But that is potentially perpetual. So you can have most, of, most of the interest that we get in land, the common ones we get in land, will be the leasehold. That is the common ones. Mm. The leasehold may also be covered from the freehold. Okay. And the leasehold, as it says, usually has a commencement date. And sometimes you lawyers will prefer, instead of expiry, you say determination yeah, date. Determination. All right, just to uh, speak big English <laughs> yeah. and perhaps extraordinary um, yeah. remuneration, isn't it? That's yeah. right. So, or the commencement and the determination date can be gathered from the document itself. Mm. Usually, we don't even state the quote and unquote expiry date. So, if it says 50 years, commencing 1st January 2020, you will have to calculate the 50 years, mm. the next 50 years, and then the expiry will occur or the determination. And in many situations, it is 99 years. Many situations, it's 99 years. There's an issue about two lands mm. where the constitution has clearly made two lands in particular, but I have argued that it is only two lands that are acquired by non-subjects of the two that the constitution has precluded. Okay. I have spent quite substantial time mm. trying to convince myself and others to read it. Right. That for me, in my reading, the limitation on the number of years one can acquire from a two land is only applicable to non-subjects. And okay. that subjects is they have inalienable rights because the ancestors may have been part of those who fought or those who made contribution to acquire it and vested it in the stool. Then it will be incongruous to say that I being a descendant of that ancestor can only have a leasehold mm. or an interest which is less than the freehold. All right. Um, you are here on the law. This is your legal light. It is your uh, help law. And our guest is uh, Yao Pong, who is uh, director of legal education, director of the Ghana School of Law, and is the author of the seminal book on land law. It's a voluminous one. Um, I'm yet to come across one that is as many as 1,060 pages. It's called The Contemporary Trends in the Land, the Law of Immovable Property in Ghana. And now let's go to, now we know original owners of land. 
we know how they can also give it to some people by what you have described in various ways, uh, freehold, leasehold, whatever you say there can be customary as well as um, other, common uh, yes, common law <clears throat> uh, as well. Now, when we come to the issue of possession, mm. it is said that possession, you know, some people can own land simply by acts of possession or occupation. Um, how do you explain that? So that we use that to go down to the subject that we are coming to discuss. Right. So it's important to highlight the fact that land is the most valuable of earthly possessions. Okay. And then I'm just referring to Account Laws and Customs by J.B. Dankwa, mm. written in 1928. And so there have been many countless laws and policies that have been fashioned out to ensure the regulation and management of acquisition of interest in land or acquisition of land itself. And I have stated in the book that possession is a tool for the acquisition of land as well. And if you, if you go to uh, part of the book where I have highlighted some of the uh, decisions of the Supreme Court mm. uh, on parts of the book. If you mm. go to like page XLI, you see a case titled Nana J. Penny versus the Now Two Entry Bo Siakon, we determined by the Court of Appeal, uh, 30th July 2020. That has been suggested by Yaudi Opon in his book, Contemporary Trends in Law of Immovable Property, at page 284, that the concept of possession is an important mode by which a person may acquire an interest in land. According to the learned author, it needs to be emphasized that possession is a presumption of ownership as stipulated in section 48 of the Evidence Act. In transactions concerning land, especially at customary law, possession or occupation could be consistent with either ownership, license, or pledge as well as with trespass. So the concept of possession is a very important one. In fact, some have said that in terms of ownership of land, possession is 99%. Is the best way to demonstrate ownership of land. It's, it's, it's a way of proving your ownership. Yes. It's, it's, because you are in possession. It's an overriding. And, and, and when we say you are in possession or possession, what does it mean? Now, it can mean what we call actual possession. Mm. You are physically in occupation. Okay. It can also mean having control over the land or the use of the land. So that it need not be you being in actual possession, physical possession or occupation. But once you have control over its use and control over all the incidents, both the positive and the negative, including payment of if you like, statutory um, fees, okay. revenue, mm -hmm. and in payment of utilities, including even controlling how the people in possession can conduct themselves, including how they use the property so that it doesn't run into ruins or they don't commit what the lawyers call waste. Okay. So you cannot... Mm -hmm. I mean, you may not be in natural possession, but you are in possession because you control the use and the, um, the operations mm. that are um, attached to the use of the property. All right. That is very important. Okay. So possession, as you said, is critical. Yes. And that some have said that it is 99% <laughs> what? Of ownership. Of ownership. 99% evidence of ownership. Evidence of ownership. Yes. But not Generally. Mm. <laughs> so then that takes us to when we say adverse possession, mm. what will that mean? And people have bandied that and say that is how somebody comes to own a land that is not theirs. What is adverse possession? So then we look, look at the word adverse. Mm -hmm. It is plain terms against contrary to, inconsistent with. Mm -hmm. So adverse possession um, touches on evidence that 
there is someone else who is exercising control, ownership, right, interest in land, which is inconsistent with, or is against the right and the interest of the original owner. Some people call them the paper owners. Right. Okay? Mm. So you have acquired your land mm -hmm. and you have permitted another person to be in possession. So you are the paper owner. You have documents yes. that show that this land is yours. yours. Mm -hmm. Then you have permitted someone to be in possession. Mm -hmm. Or without permission, somebody has entered the land. That person has no paper, he no documents. He has document. no paper, nothing. Mm. And is in possession. Mm. Now, you must be able to show that is the person who is in possession and is relying on adverse conduct of his. What he has to prove is not only that he is in possession and doing things that the real owner will not even do, including sale or portion of the land, including alteration, if there is a property on it, alteration to the building, for example, mm. if it's farm, removing your cocoa farms and, and planting, let's say, orange, or allowing Galamse people to take over the land mm -hmm. and he taking the proceeds for it. These together, cumulatively, may amount to adverse possession. But that is not enough. Mm -hmm. Whether well, even is 50 years. Because there is a general provision that long possession in land does not, in and by itself, Ripping into ownership. Long possession yes. of land. You, the one who is not the paper owner. No, yes. It doesn't matter how long you stay on the land. Yes. It does not ripen yes. into you being the owner. The owner. Generally, yes. Okay. And the authorities are very mm. clear on it. Okay. Now, what will perhaps give him some semblance of ownership? It's where the quote and unquote, the paper owner becomes very much aware of these acts of adverse possession. This, this conduct of the person you have permitted to be on the land or who has entered your land. For example, he commits alterations to your property. You see it, you don't say anything. Mm. You go to the land, somebody is constructing a wall to demarcate that part which you have not constructed, the vacant portion from the main part. And you ask me, say, oh, the owner in the uncompleted building gave me this land. You say nothing. Obviously, that act of alienating that portion of the land to the third party is inconsistent with your own right because you have not decided to sell it or alienate it mm. or dispossess yourself of that portion. These are signposts that should suggest to you that that person in possession is exercising acts of ownership. But the courts have held in one case that mere erection of corner pillars mm -hmm. is not enough. And mere payment of, say, um, some statutory mm. um, like permit, payment for permit and so on, they are not also let, not let, let me Let me quote one case that you referred to in... <clears throat> In page 310, yes. uh, paragraph 50, yes. uh, where you treat the subject of adverse possession and the Limitation Act, That's right. you say that the Supreme Court in Abe and Addis versus Entry explained the circumstances under which a claim of adverse possession may be founded. Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, an unlearned mind, <laughs> once I read this, it tells me that it is possible for somebody to eventually claim ownership of my property and succeed. You say, it's, you say that the Supreme Court has explained mm -hmm. the circumstances under which a person, a, a claim of adverse possession may be founded. Yes. In the opinion of their lordships, quote, a claim of adverse possession could not be based on a clandestine payment of tribute alone. They must be open, mm -hmm. visible, yeah. unchallenged, yeah. and apparent, so as to give notice to the legal owner 
that someone might be asserting a claim. That is right. Explain this to show us that it's not possible for somebody to come to become somebody who is a caretaker or a relative or somebody who has come onto my land to become the owner of it well, so, subsequently. So, for example, from this case, and it's, mm. it's quite recent. Right. 2014. Now, mm. what you see here, uh, sorry, it's 2010. Mm. What you see here is that, for example, so we are highlighting the issue of notice mm. and knowledge to the, what the, um, the court said, the legal owner. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm abroad. I'm in Ukraine, mm -hmm. or if you prefer Russia. <laughs> I've asked someone, a relative, any other person, to, as we put it simply, stay on my land. The Shesumami mm -hmm. people. Or stay in my house. Yes, in my house. Mm -hmm. He can actually give it for rent. Now, yes, <laughs> then, because of maybe the war, mm -hmm. touch wood, maybe extends to 12 years. I'm not able to come to Ghana. And I have otherwise no or possibility of knowing that you have started causing nutrition, waste, and so on to the land. You have even sold a portion of the land to somebody else. Mm. You have removed my rose flowers and so on, on from the land. Then I come back after 12 years, so my friend, Leave the house, mm -hmm. or I want you to leave the land. They said, Have you ever heard of adverse possession before? Mm -hmm. Say, No. Well, I have been on this land for 12 years. I have even sold a portion to somebody else. I'm afraid your right to this land or your interest in this land is completely extinguished. That one, I'm not a lawyer, but I can tell you. Mm -hmm. Then perhaps he has even a copy of the Limitation Act. Right. Shows it to you. Mm -hmm. That cannot be what the Act anticipates. Mm -hmm. If that were to be the case, then that would be one of the laws that are being used as instruments for fraud. Okay. And no law passed by the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana or any other person with authority to make law should be used as an instrument to defraud others. Mm. And that is why the court, Supreme Court has said that the acts of possession that must be, um, that can be said to amount to adverse possession must be visible, unchallenged, and apparent so as to give notice. So without notice to the original owner, you cannot succeed. And in any case, it's usually a defense for the adverse possessor. And he then bears the burden, a very heavy one, of course, to prove all this with evidence. But mm -hmm. above all, there must be incontrovertible evidence that the legal owner had notice of all this and yet could not be bothered mm -hmm. and looked aside for the adverse possessor to now become the owner after 12 years. But as I've said, I think it's a very bad law to a large extent. The Constitution guarantees ownership of right to property. In fact, Article 13 goes on to say that you can preserve your property even at the point of killing a person trying to encroach. Okay, so let's say that because of the 12 years, mm -hmm my right is extinguished. Then I can also forcefully enter the land after the adverse possessor has become owner. <laughs> Prevent him from having access. 12 years, I still become the owner. So I think that... That's going to be jungle. Well, well I think that the limitation act should have just concerned itself with periods within which a person can bring an action to court. Mm. For example, for recovery or possession or recovery of a debt, and so on. And should have been silent about whether or not if my right to go to court has been ousted or extinguished by operation of law because it's after 12 years. Mm -hmm. That should not lead to me, my right to the property also being extinguished. There okay. are two different things. And yet section six of the act has said that once you are unable, no, that's section 10 six, forgive me. 10 six of the, of the limitation act. Once my right to come to court has been extinguished after 12 years, it also automatically extinguishes the rights I had 
and the interest I had in the land. I think it's completely unfair. So, so <clears throat> there are some who make a distinction between long possession and adverse possession. Are they separate? So that you can be on my property for a very long time, but you, are not, you have not done things or you are not claiming uh, adverse possession. Is, is there any yes, difference? Sir, that is very clear. Mm. That is why I took my time to explain some of the signposts right. of adverse possession. Mm. You are on the land for 25 years. You, when I want to enter the land, you freely come. I mean, you give me the right to enter. Sometimes, today I'm so tired, I want to stay in one of the rooms and I won't go to my other house. Mm. I stay in that room. I want to bring masons to do some alterations or extend. You don't resist. This is not somebody in adverse possession. So possession alone is not enough. But that leads us to the question, who is entitled to claim that he has exercised acts of adverse possession? Okay. It excludes caretakers. Mm. As a recent case by the Supreme Court says so. So, okay. so, me, so yeah. first you had made it clear to us, remember he had made it clear to us that it doesn't matter how long you have been in possession, it will not mature into you having acquired ownership. It doesn't happen. But in respect of the limitation act, uh, where that's a law, where if you have looked on for the person who is on your property, whether the person came on the property by themselves or you put them there, relatives or whatever, call them caretakers, and they are doing things that are against your interest. They are selling portions of their land or changing, building, breaking the building and rebuilding it somehow, and you are not complaining, you are looking on, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. You may put yourself in a position where you could be in... Uh, some trouble. But there are those who say it, you are going to a question of a caretaker, which is very important. Yes. There are those who say a caretaker means that you have actually put that person there. That, first of all, is a recognition that that is your property. So I decide that, Kweku, come and take care of this thing for me. How can you then let us tell me that according to the law, after 12 years, you know, you could stand the chance of becoming the owner of the property that I gave you permission <laughs> to, 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 to watch over for yes, me? Exactly. That is the point. You see, and um, if I were a judge, I would definitely make sure that this law will hardly, this provision will hardly be applied. You, you are going to talk about a certain so, orientation so about it. Now, recent. the first thing is about who is entitled to claim adverse possession. Okay. And now, in a recent case by the Supreme Court, mm. uh, Binga Dugbati Sapo versus Eko Bosompra, mm. it's 2020, and the Supreme Court speaking through his lordship, Kulendi JSC. This is what. Oh, that's very recent. Yes, 2020. Mm. Yeah. This is what he said, and I'm reading from um, Dennis Law, mm. Supreme Court. Report. Okay. The term adverse possession was explained by Atuguba JSC in the case of Jin and Musa. But before then, this is what he said in connection with caretakers. Now, we are of the view that an appellant who alleges that he or she is a caretaker of land cannot rely on an alternative plea of adverse possession. Any act of ownership purported to have been exhibited by the caretaker is done at the behest of the person who put the caretaker there. Mm -hmm. Relationship between a caretaker and a person who put him in possession is synonymous to that of a principal and an agent. Therefore, just as an agent cannot claim title for his benefits and for himself, but on the instructions and for the benefit of the principal, so will a caretaker not be able to claim adverse possession for himself. This is so sound. Yes, in plain language. Principal and agent. Yes. I, I, am, I am doing some business, mm -hmm. and I have employed you, maybe go around and look for 
uh, customers for me. That's right. You can't claim later that the business belongs to you. Yes. Whatever you do, you are my, you know, uh, agent. agent. You cannot become the principal. So whatever you do, you do it in my name. Yes. That's, that's what this judgment is that's saying. That's what he's saying. So a caretaker or whoever it is, a relation that you have put yeah. in charge of your property can never become the owner of it. Yes, because, I mean, in, in my view, you have been in possession only because I have permitted you. Okay. And in that case, of course, if you engage in any act that results in a liability, I will be the one to pay, right. like, curiously. Mm. And so when it comes to benefit, you keep it. But when it comes to liability, I should be responsible for it. No, the mere, um, the simple explanation on the law of um, agency is very clear in these terms. But I can say that, with all due respect, the decisions of the Supreme Court have not until recently been very consistent. Okay. And, and we have outlined mm. some of it. But right. I see that in recent times, mm. it's been so progressive because... Mm. We know that we live in a society where the strong and the rich may exercise enormous energy just to deprive another person. Remember Muzu and Oklika, mm -hmm. very good friends, mm -hmm. have acquired land. They mm -hmm. go to the side together. Mm -hmm. But because one had money or had influence, he was able to register the land. Because they say, no way. Mm -hmm. Even if you have registered the land, Somebody else was in possession before you did. Okay. And your registration is subject to the possession. This, this very latest uh, decision of the Supreme Court, how do you reconcile that with what you uh, refer to in page 310 of your book, which I read a while ago, <clears throat> the portion of the uh, uh, judgment in Abbey and Addis? Yes where it says that a claim of advert possession could not be based on clandestine payments of tribute alone. Mm -hmm. They must be open, visible, unchallenged, and apparent, so as to give notice to the legal owner that someone might be asserting a claim. Um, Justice Alexander Osetitu also writes about it in <clears throat> page 122 of his book, and he says that it should be noted that whereas a landowner's title may extinguish if a person successfully demonstrates visible, open, and unchallenged acts of adverse possession for a period of 12 years, same cannot, however, be said to be the law if the person in possession does not demonstrate any overt act of adverse possession no matter the length of time he remains on the land. Yes, yes, it's completely the position of the law. That, that's why I said that long possession of land in and by itself Can does not mature. ripen or mature into ownership. ownership. There must always be acts of adverse possession by the, the appropriate persons. Mm. But just to also, you will see that um, I have also dealt with the uh, Limitation Act 312, that the Limitation Act, the squatters darling, mm -hmm. squatters, it eats squatters quite a lot. Now, there is an interesting quote from one of my favorite cases. Um, the Supreme Court through Justice Benning said in um, IE versus Shell Ghana Limited and Fraga Oil, um, uh, 2017 there about, it says, a person you consider a squatter, sleeping in a kiosk, might have been placed there by the landlord as caretaker or overseer. It is equally his duty as a prudent purchaser to find out who must have erected the structure there. So, talking about squatters, the, it will still go to the same point that we are making. Yes, he may be a squatter, but he has been on the land for, say, more than 12 years. You have seen him doing things that are clearly inconsistent with your interests. What he is doing, rather, is that he has now assumed the position of the owner. And you know that in law, when a person by his conduct or worse or deed exhibits 
acts that even if he's a tenant, but he, he, he conducts himself as if he's the owner, he has automatically stated to you that you are no more the owner. And that person, it is said, completely also loses the, the rights in the tenants. Um, I almost uh, forgot that I'm supposed to come to you to hear your uh, <laughs> questions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if um, you want to call us, we can take uh, two, three calls, uh, maybe maximum. So you can call us and ask a question. Uh, I know because it's a land discussion, often the questions are long, mm. but try and summarize it in a way that we can understand. Uh, this is the law, it is your legal rights, it is your health law, and we are hosting Yao Opong, who is the author of this book, Contemporary Trends in the Law of Immovable Property in Ghana. And he is the director of uh, legal education and the Ghana School of Law. Uh, so thank you. Um, you can call us. If you call, we will take your question for him. And then let's go to our very first caller. Al Hassan, you are calling from Accra. What's your question, Al Hassan? Hello, Al Hassan. Okay, unfortunately, Al Hassan's line. Al Hassan, can you hear me? And please don't call us with uh, cases that are already in court. Mm. I remember when we were hosting Justice Society to hear, <laughs> some of you were calling to seek advice on matters that are pending in the court. We cannot help you in that regard. You must ask about matters that haven't gone to court at all. Uh, so if you seek education on something like that, we can assist you, but not something that's already pending in the court. Um, let's see, Marshall. Uh, where are you calling from, Marshall? Hello, Marshall. Yes, please. Yes, go ahead with your question. Uh, my question is... Uh... Okay, so we lost Marshall. Uh, I think it looks like I've lost like two people already. What's happening with the lines? Kwame, you are calling from Accra. Yes. Okay, so um, you've been talking about the fact that... For... Oh. You have a land, okay, let me say, I have a land with a title, and somebody enters the land and attempts to... to, to you, are, you are on, go ahead. Ignore the, ignore the interference, go ahead. Okay, so somebody attempts to, you talk about address possession, and so what action, when, when you notice that somebody has entered your land that you have a title to, what action is required? Okay. It's a okay. warning, getting the person not to continue building. Thank you very much, Kwame. Uh, John, John, you are calling from Ketekrachi. Let's hear you, John. Like, uh, your father has a land, and then somebody, uh, he took somebody to go and take care of the land. And now, now the land, the person has stood there about like the 12th year you are staying. You have been farming there and other things. Now you go, you want to take the land. So what do you do about it? Okay, thank you very much, uh, John Ketekrachi. Uh, so Kwame wants to know, if I find out that somebody has come onto my property, uh, what should I do? And then John is saying, if you give somebody your, your land to farm, mm -hmm. and I, in 12 years, he's trying to dispossess you, what can you do? First one, it's about steps for recovery, because he has already entered the land. Now, what you have to do is um, take the easy way out first. I mean, confront the person um, if that will not result in any violent um, act. Confront the person and let him know that perhaps if somebody else has sold the land to him, he should have known that um, well, it's yours if he had conducted proper due diligence. So it's yours. I mean, if he doesn't leave, you may write to him, maybe through a lawyer. And if that fails, at the same time, you are counting the years. If that fails, you may instruct your lawyers or you yourself can commence an action for recovery of possession and perhaps declaration of title mm. against him. Okay. But don't wait till the 12 years. You may have to engage in a very long argument 
against... If you are the one who puts the person there as a caretaker and they are beginning to do some things, what yes, can you do? If you're a caretaker, you can uh, use the same process. In fact, the police have some units, property fraud. Yes. You may also report them. Eventually, they may tell you that, well, if he's unwilling to leave, then you may have to go to court. But a number of times where it has worked and the police have been able to use the, within the, uh, the provisions of the law to get the people to be ejected. Okay. Otherwise, just go to court. So it's a caretaker, and the caretaker is your, your agent. Mm. So you have the right to get them out of yes. your land if they are doing things that you are not happy about. Mm. If you warn, you caution them, and they continue, then either you ask them to clear off. Mm. If they don't, then like uh, the advice is coming, take the steps to remove them uh, properly. The police who have a unit, the land, uh, the property fraud unit, you go there, they will ask you to bring your document. Yeah. The other person, they will ask them, they should also bring what document shows that the land is theirs. If they can't, they will tell the person, stay off. If he doesn't still, then you can go to court and perhaps get an injunction against yes. him and get the court to pronounce that you are the owner. But don't take the risk, sorry, just quickly, of mm. perhaps trying to demolish any property they have put it on it. They may leave, but the police may also charge you okay. with unlawful, uh, causing unlawful destruction or whatever they put into okay. property. All right. Uh -huh. So just be careful about that as well. Right. Uh, John in Ketakrache, John's question was simply uh -huh. that um, he said, yes. yeah, he's giving the land already. The land, yes. yes. And then uh, after 12 years, the person is trying to... So it's not only about uh, buildings on properties. Mm. It's about all forms of um, activities on land. You have to uh, also, in this case, be vigilant. If you become aware that the person, as I said, has um, cut down your cocoa trees and <laughs> now trying to plant coconut or other things, which is not what you want. These are signposts of acts of adverse possession and right. you need to act mm. swiftly. If it's in the village, normally you can report to the, the chief or any person, opinion leader, okay. everybody. Um, in some 30 seconds, what word of advice would you give to property owners and those who also try to interfere? How time runs, <laughs> Well, so um, first of all, if this is your only land, I say that it's good to have the land registered, but take possession yourself. Once you are certain that the person who alienated the land to you is the owner, first construct a wall, a fence wall even if you don't have money to build. Use the little money you have to fence it. The first thing the court will be looking at when you go to court, and once you fence it, take pictures. Pictures that will show dates on which you, you constructed the wall. Great. So that if anybody breaks into it, that is the first sign of uh, encroachment. Okay. And then you can use that alone, in my view, with some other evidence mm. to show that you are there. But if you leave it unattended to, mm. and they start constructing a wall on it, or a fence wall on it, you, could get yourself you may have a trouble. more difficult uh, task. Thank you so time. very much. Like thank you said, you how much. time runs. Um, so we have been speaking with the Director of Legal Education and Director of Ghana School of Law, um, Berima Yao Kodye uh, Opong, and um, he... The school authorities would not forgive me. Give the full title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Mare Hene of Achim Ebuakwa. And uh, he's the author of Contemporary Trends in Law of Move Immovable Property. Uh, it is edited by His Lordship Justice Kwesi Enin Yebua, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana. And the foreword is lovely. You should see it, written by Justice Jones Doche. Have a good afternoon. Thank you once again. Thank you. It's a privilege. Right. Thank you.